Swedish Prime Minister resigned after conceding election defeat to right-wing bloc. The leader of Sweden, incumbent Social Democrats, has resigned as prime minister after conceding defeat in the country's knife-edge election, handing victory to a loose bloc of right-wing parties that include the far-right Sweden Democrats. The prime minister Magdalena Andersson called a press conference at which she accepted defeat. While pointing out that her Social Democrats remain Sweden's largest party, with more than 30 percent of the vote, and that the majority in parliament for the right bloc was very slim, when postal votes and those of citizens living abroad were counted on Wednesday, a loose coalition of the SD and the three centre-right parties edged ahead to win a majority of three in parliament of 349 seats. There is no formal agreement between the SD and the moderates, Christian Democrats and Liberal, about how they will govern together. Although the central right parties have said they will not contest ministerial positions for the far right, however, the SD's strong showing, making it Sweden's second largest party and the largest on the right with more than 20 percent of the poll. Puts it in a strong position to extract concession in return for its support in parliament. Andersson, the Social Democrats party leader, noted that it was a narrow majority, but a majority nonetheless. So tomorrow I will hand in my resignation as prime minister, and the responsibility for continuing process will go to the speaker. Andersson said, "Now the works began to make Sweden good again," and the SD leader. Jimmy Akessens wrote on Facebook, "We have enough of failed social democrats policies that for eight years have continued to lead the countries in the wrong direction. It is time to start rebuilding security, welfare, and cohesion. It is time to put Sweden first." He wrote. Uf Christiansen, those moderate party came third with 19 percent of the poll, and who is now in line becoming the new prime minister. Thank voters for their trust and said, "Now we will have order in Sweden." The final tally show that the right bloc won 49.6 percent of votes, while the left bloc secured 48.9 percent. Given the closeness of the vote and the uncertainties over the final outcomes, all the parties have refrained from making statement about a possible new government since polling station closed on Sunday night. However, some of the key battlegrounds for a future right-wing coalition government with SD influence have already become clear. The narrow majority enjoy the right, however, promises to make any future government fragile and vulnerable to individuals, parliamentarians voting with their consistence. One Liberal Party MP already on Wednesday promised to try to bring down a government with SD involvement. If the final results confirm her election to the parliament, I went to the poll to defend human rights and freedom. Romina told Swedish media, "That is where we liberals will have to aim our fires in the coming years." After emerging among Sweden's violent neo-Nazi group in the late 1980s, the Sweden Democrats have made tensions and repeat effort. To exclude races and extremists from their ranks, and present themselves as a socially conservative party aiming to defend Swedish national tradition and culture, but a halt to immigrants from non-European country is a central plank on the party's politic and key to its electoral success. The SD stated policy of open Swedishness told that anybody can become Swedish if they learn the language and adopt the culture. But the notion of a Swedish Muslim appeared to lie outside this approach. Researchers say there was likely to be a new approach to the media, more money for law and order, and a period where Swedishness and loyalty to Swedish value, defined from above, would be a central importance and would permit school and universities' course, libraries, cultures, and the civil service. Hinner said the direction is clear. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.